So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive on manual focus and autofocus. When to use the different modes, what to focus on, what settings to use, basically what you're gonna to need to be prepared for in real world scenarios when the time comes. So thanks for joining, now let's get into it. So first let's talk about manual focus because I think it's really important to be comfortable with that. And then we'll talk about autofocus and some more complicated autofocus setups that you should also be ready to use for creative purposes. So I actually started out using manual focus only because at that point in like 2011, 12, cameras autofocus was just way, 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 way worse than it is now. So for real estate photos and real estate videos, that was the only way to ensure that your uh, photos were actually gonna be sharp in focus and you wouldn't have to be worried about it. If you're gonna use manual focus, there's a few things you need to do. You can go in and change the focus peaking settings to where it'll be red or white or something that's really, really obvious. I like to set mine to red. So I'll set that and then I will still use the spot focus for my focus guides. So I'll click a spot on the screen and then the focus guide comes up that looks like this on Canon. And as you get closer to focus, it kind of closes in and that's how you know it's in focus. Plus you can see that the things turn red as they're in focus. So if you're new to it, those are really, really helpful tools to help you nail the focus. Next tip I have for the manual focusers is to actually get a off camera monitor. So if you get a monitor that's like five inches or seven inches, that's gonna help you a lot getting your critical focus nailed in properly. A lot of photographers also use a thing called Cam Ranger where they use an iPad and they can trigger their camera remotely, they can change their settings, see previews for HDR images and everything. And if you're just doing photography, I think that's definitely worth looking into. So now let's talk about autofocus, which is what you're probably here for. So for settings, like I said earlier, I almost always use the spot focus mode. It works for me. I don't have any problems with it usually, so that's what I use. For video purposes, I usually set my focus speed to a slower setting because I want uh, focus changes to be a little bit more natural feeling, like someone's pulling the focus, as opposed to just like quickly, quickly jumping between things if I'm moving past stuff or um, like in real estate, you're flying through spaces. So that's why for me, it makes it look a little bit smoother. If you're just doing photography, obviously putting it on fast should be great. So we got spot focus. We got the settings dialed in. Now what do we actually focus on from shot to shot? So for wide shots, as you move through the space, you want the most important objects to be in focus as you move through the space. So it's really gonna vary from shot to shot, depending on how you're moving, depending on what kind of furniture is in the space, depending on how the lighting conditions are. And as you guys know, if you're in real estate, it is always different, every house. So I will typically set my spot focus spot to be a large spot and I will set it to usually a lower third or to one of the sides on the third. So you gotta have your guidelines up for this, but basically that is usually a spot where there's gonna be furniture for it to focus on or that is gonna be like a wall with details, or if it's an outside shot that can be focused on the ground or like a pool feature or something like that. If I'm doing a push-in shot going straight towards something, I'll just focus straight in the middle of the frame because you probably want like a fireplace or the front of the house to stay in focus the entire time. The main thing to watch out for is focusing way too close to your camera or way too far away to where nothing in the composition is actually in focus. And photos and videos are pretty similar, but photos are gonna be a little bit different because you're probably shooting at like F8. So as long as you focus somewhere in the middle of the room that you're showing or the middle of the you know, general field of view, what's in frame, um, pretty much everything is gonna be in focus. But for video, most of us are filming at lower apertures like 2.8 to 4 because we're working with low light situations and a lot of us like the more cinematic looking shallower depth of field look. So either way, just always double check your work. Make sure you watch it playback, that the focus didn't do anything weird. Watch it while you're actually filming. Zoom in and make sure your focus is really good if you can and you should be okay. 
All right, detail shots. So this is with a tighter perspective, so 50 plus usually, or the equivalent of that if you're using the crop hack. Most cameras you can actually crop in when you shoot 4K or you can switch to crop sensor mode and you can get somewhere close to like a 50 millimeter perspective for your detail shots. So if you really want to, you can just get one lens and knock pretty much everything out. This is when I really like to switch to tracking. Um, same if I'm filming people walking through a real estate space or something like that. Pretty much every camera now has a tracking mode and you just click the object and as you do your movement, walking around something, it tracks it and you're good to go. The only problems that I have with this are if I'm doing a really up close detail, like a macro shot, sometimes I'll use my 100 millimeter and for that, usually I'm doing a smaller, more intricate detail of a detail basically. And it works really well just to switch over to manual focus and dial that in. Another time I'll use manual focus a lot is if I'm incorporating a lot of foreground elements to add to the camera movements. So like if there's trees in between me and the house or if there are, you know, like light fixtures or lamps or something in between me and a fireplace, uh, manual focus, getting that dialed in helps a lot so that your focus is not jumping between the detail that you're trying to show and the thing that's in between you, your camera and that actual detail. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> So that's about it. Uh, pretty simple, but I know when you're getting started out, this is a lot to get used to. There's so many options on camera settings. It can be overwhelming. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, let me know in the comments if you got any questions and I'll be glad to help you out. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.